All right, um, we have the mount outside. Uh, let's see. So the tripod is set up. You can see some of the powder coating. It's got a fleck in it. It's kind of nice. It's just a little uneven. Thought it would be a little bit better, but hey, it's fine. Uh, it's just the fleck, but uh, the actual black is uh, pretty well done. Um, this is just double nutted right now uh, to adjust out altitude on the wedge. Then uh, azimuth is a pusher type system. We'll loosen these four. Uh, it's still sitting on the PTFE Teflon material for easy rotation. Uh, good old wrench to adjust altitude. Um, but we're hoping for clear skies tonight. Uh, we've so far had a rain move through, but a few puffy clouds. So hopefully that front will keep moving through and we'll get clear skies tonight. Declination I've redesigned. Um, it's much more compact. Uh, these three ports are 12 volt output, so I have my camera cooler plugged into that 12 volt. Uh, these are just miscellaneous right now, nothing's hooked up. Uh, let's see, let's move, keep talking about the declination here. Uh, this is the USB hub. You can see what I did is I moved it up, I stood it up vertically inside of there. Uh, this allowed me to bring it back. Uh, so it will, we have less clearance issues with the right ascension motor right now the only collision that I'm running into is my ADM uh, knob that uh, opens and closes the saddle everything else rotates around this really nice so here's the solution um, I, when putting <clears throat> the ADM saddle on, decided to move it back for weight distribution. Um, I'm finding that's not necessary, and I actually need to move this back forward. Uh, it makes it much easier to balance the telescope. Uh, right now I have the telescope maxed out all the way forward as far as I could go without hitting the focuser. So that will make my solution for total clearance. Right now, if I um, am tracking a target due east and I come up and hit about 20 degrees till zenith, that's when this ADM knob will come close to this corner. I thought about redesigning this, which I could, uh, the reason why this is so big is I left room for a NEMA 23 uh, motor. And in my performance and in my testing, I don't think 23, 23 is going to be too much, if anything. Uh, 17 is doing just fine. And that leads me to, I replace the economy gearbox with the precision gearbox, the PLE series, if I remember right. I'll try to update that if I'm not correct. Uh, it has backlash of 20 arc minutes, and that's got a few people on the interwebs very nervous about my tracking accuracy because that gearbox has 20 minutes of backlash. Um, I don't know, we'll find out. You know, all I can do is point this thing at a star and tell PhD to track it. And PhD is going to let us know if it can keep up or not. Um, there are backlash inputs I can put on on step, uh, but we are just going to go with the stock settings. Uh, we'll see how it goes tonight. If I get a star, I can start tracking on. 
I've got basic setup is 1600 uh, ZHOs, 1600 monochrome, filter, five filter wheel, one and a quarter inch filters, focuser, QHY, Q, yeah, QHY guide camera, and uh, the old AstroTech, AstroTech AT80 ED. Uh, I do have the uh, focal uh, reducer. Um, to uh, widen out the field for photography a little bit more, try to get rid of those bent corners. Uh, I haven't used, have I? No, I think I have used it, yeah. I've got some photography where I've shot with that. I, I got it before. Uh, I kind of tore down my CGE Pro. Uh, I have done balancing. Balancing of the telescope Basically what you do is you want to disconnect the belt. So what this is, you can see I've got these two bolts that go into the heat set threaded insert on this motor, on the, I call it the, what do I call it, motor sleeve. And this rides inside this chamber on these four uh, guide rails, uh, three millimeter metal uh, guide rails. So adjusting the belt is by turning these two screws in and out and it pulls this motor sleeve out and puts tension. So in order to balance this, we there are no clutches. So we have to uh, unscrew those two, move the motor all the way in, take the belt off, and now we've got a freewheeling uh, bearing. Uh, I've got it mounted out. This is a CG5 weight. I, do not remember how heavy this is. I don't know if I had to guess 10 pounds. I do not know. I'll see if I can update that in the comments or in, yeah, in the description. Um, I've got all the covers, 3D printed covers, so no steel is showing. Uh, the motor box, or I mean the electronic box right now, uh, I got, you know, I got clear skies, I got a working mount, I had to take it out. So all of my on-step computer right now is down here. This is my CGE Pro motor bo or on-step box uh, that I sell on my website. And so I've kept it external. Um, this uh, sends signals or RA and DEC up to these connectors. And then my wiring goes up through RA into deck uh, to the motors, uh, to the switches, the USB powered USB 3 hub uh, comes out and down. Uh, uh, white is deck, orange is RA. Uh, the DB9 is for switches, uh, home limit, etc. This is a power supply, 12 volt power supply that runs up. Uh, then I've had those 12 volt connectors on that side. Uh, I've got a buck converter in here that converts, uh, this powered hub needs five volts. So I convert down to five volts and supply this, this USB three hub with five volts. <laughs> I did run into, I, I couldn't get the power to that USB hub. So I need to redesign this. I had to, screw some holes in some 3D printed materials in order to plug that into power. I just couldn't couldn't get it to work by soldering on, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what I compromised with. So that needs a redesign uh, to tighten that up. Um, all of my wires are up on telescope and plugged into deck. So all the USBs from all my cameras, filter wheel, focuser, are plugging into here. And one USB cord is coming down and going into my Raspberry Pi. Uh, so no wires drooping down. Um, uh, I do have one wire. This is the temperature probe for the focuser that I just have kind of tucked up here. And I just knocked it down. So I kind of need to tidy up that wiring just a little bit. Uh, let's see... I am super happy, super excited, and can't wait to see what tracking is going to be like. Uh, this thing is even more quiet. I put these gear boxes on, the precision ones, and it got quieter. I mean, this thing is like 
you can't even tell it's running. It's so crazy quiet. Uh, it's pretty cool. All right. Let's see. Anything else I need to talk about? I don't know. Um, we will see how this goes tonight. Uh, I'm going to move back here, see if I can get some more. But that is the full tripod. Uh, eventually I'll get that on step computer up inside here I'm gonna take my time and I I want to plan this out really well there's plenty of room in here for electronics um, so what I'll probably have is um, I do have an Ethernet switch out on this patio so I could do hardwired Ethernet uh, I could right now oh I should talk about right now my Raspberry Pi is just dangling um, it's being powered by USB to USB-C and there's the uh, USB powered hub plugged into it. What's on my Raspberry Pi is Indie Server. Indie Server is what takes all my USB devices and connects to them. It's this is my on my computer that I then connect from inside the house. I'll take my laptop and use Ecos K Stars. Uh, software to connect to this computer then I'll have access to all of my devices all of my USB devices my focuser my camera everything on that Raspberry Pi computer I'll have access to inside the house um, so I'll be remoting in so that's the Raspberry Pi computer side of that um, but I will I'm gonna have the Raspberry Pi the on step computer Wi-Fi Ethernet Hopefully one power cable. Right now I have a power cable here just to run power up there with the buck computer. I also have power cable on the on-step computer down there because it needs 12 volt power. Uh, I don't know. I can't think of anything else right now. Uh, super happy, super proud. Uh, we shall see how it goes tonight. I hopefully we'll get a star we can track. We'll uh, I'll try to do a screen capture of uh, PhD and Ecos K stars as I'm controlling them out, um, and we'll show the results. Uh, so we'll find out if 20 arc minutes on that transmission is going to cause guiding problems, auto guiding, tracking, etc, etc. I do not know. We'll find out. Uh, there is, I can't remember if I said this on this video or another one, I lost a couple videos because of audio. Uh, OnStep does have backlash uh, settings that I, if I do run into backlash, I can punch in backlash on the OnStep computer. Um, and then also, I believe PhD uh, automatically tries to figure out backlash. So that's the numbers we'll be looking at tonight. Um, but there are ways of working with backlash. I mean, every telescope mount has backlash. How much? I don't know. I have no idea. How do you measure that? I guess PhD. Uh, you know, I never, I never really paid attention to my CGE Pro backlash numbers. Uh, maybe I should have, but didn't really care. Uh, as long as PhD was able to keep tracking, that's all I cared about. And so we'll see what happens tonight. Hopefully we'll be able to track and PhD will all keep up with the amount of backlash that's built into this system. And we will find out. Limit and home switches. Those are working great. If I say, if I click go home, go find home, it knows what side of the cam it's on and it'll rotate RA the proper way to go find home. Uh, same with declination. Uh, this is the other side of the cam, but on the other side of the declination is a switch for its cam and it knows, okay, I'm on the high side of the cam or I'm on the low side. I know which way I need to turn in order to go home. So that's how that works. Uh, and OnStep does that for you. Uh, you just need to set up the switches 
so that when RA is on east-west or declination north-south, that the switch is on or off, uh, whichever way, and stays on or off until uh, home is found. That's how OnStep works with homing. So, I don't know. You can see my lovely oak tree that I have to fight with. I don't have much much sky, but I have enough. It goes east to west. Um, I have enough that I can do imaging and play it from home. If I want to go out to a dark sky, I can. Will I take this mount? I don't know. It's pretty heavy. I guess that is another thing I can talk about. Uh, disassembling this and bringing it up. The top half, what I did is, uh, this comes apart, there's the top half, which is the all the mount, the wheel bearings, the 3D printing, down to this plate, it's a quarter inch plate, that's on top of another quarter inch plate. These four knobs, you unhook, and this whole top assembly comes off. Uh, that top assembly was 67 pounds. So, just more information as far as build weight. That's without the counterbalance, that's without the telescope, 67 pounds. Uh, and then the bottom half, the tripod legs are rather light compared, uh, maybe 10 pounds, something like that, five, I don't know. So that is more information on the actual tripod and mount. The top half is 67 pounds, so, okay. Uh, I'm gonna call it and Hopefully I will have some screen recordings from tonight's uh, setup imaging session and we'll do some guiding and take some pictures. So we'll see you later. All right, we have some stars tonight. We'll see how we do. I've started, uh, I already did the polar drift alignment. So now I am going to my first star. And let's see, ZWSA one by one, 30 seconds. Let's bring it down to 15. We're going to do a sync. So let's do a capture. I haven't even looked at focus. I believe focus didn't look too bad when I was doing some testing earlier. So this is going to do a 15 second capture with my main camera, the 1600. And uh, if it solves, uh, it will synchronize and thus set my first target star. As you can see, I'm running into some a little bit of cloudy stuff here. It's still early in the night. It's 10 o'clock. So it's not super duper dark, but it's dark enough. Let's see if we get a solve on this. We might have to go to 20 or 30 seconds. Okay, it did solve. We are way, quite a bit off, but at least we synchronized. Uh, let's go and slew, we'll go here. The image of my house is relatively accurate. Not super accurate, it just gives me a decent estimation. 
of what all I can see from my back porch. Okay. We'll try 15 seconds again. Uh, let's do check. Current star two, number star. So this is where you do your start your align. So the first one did solve and sync. So let's go ahead and do this one. Sync, 15 seconds, capture and solve. Looks like focus is out. And we'll see if how much, if we get closer here to this particular target. Oh, I think we are. Ooh, look at that, baby. Woo! Not bad at all. Let's see, there it gives the actual frame and rotation of what we solved. Uh, let's see if there's something to the south. We can, let's go ahead and hit Spica. Oh, is it gonna flip? I don't think okay it must have been inside yeah uh, on step has limits okay eight eight degrees wow I didn't think that was within eight degrees but let's see where we're at okay it's coming around Let's do, I'll solve again. We'll go 15 seconds, capture and solve. Well, we were off on that one more, but in the ballpark, it was able to solve with a meridian flip, you know, not too bad. All right, so let's double check. Okay, a line finished. EQ polar air alt negative three, eight, four minutes. And I don't know, I'm not super familiar with it, but this is my, maybe I'll, I can consult with the guys at OnStep. But essentially that is 384 minutes by 2032 minutes, or is that, is, is that seconds? I can't. Alright, so we are aligned. Let's go well let's go ahead and track this uh, that looked that didn't look all that bad we are meridian flipped so we are going to be guiding from east to west so we'll have some time on this not much uh, let's okay phd is on or at least okay auto star 
Let's give this a shot. Calibration, looping exposures. West step five, West step six. Distance 23, oops, 18, 12, 7. Okay, so it's reeling it back in. Clearing backlash, step 1, step 2, step 3. North step. It's pretty darn responsive. I mean, when it gives a step, it's moving and it's so, you know, I don't know a whole lot about backlash. So maybe once this comes out, people can tell me if this is good where to find the backlash, yada, yada, yada. But um, is it reeling back in? Yeah, reeling it back in now. This is performing just as well as what I've seen on the CGE Pro and other Celestron mounts, as far as I can tell. So guiding. Periodic error over here. What is this? Arc seconds. RMS got signal noise eighty five. Pulse length sixty four. Let's hop back over to so what is it? Blue is R A, red is deck. And those are arc seconds. So we are plus or minus one arc second, if I'm reading this right. Oop, okay, two. RA limit. R8. What is this, half? Okay, so what was that? That was RA just Dove off the bottom, came back. What are we seeing here? Why don't we have one? Oh, here, this is the one I'm used to. Uh, one arc second is the desired guiding that I have set up here. Uh, it's been a while, so I use it. I'm trying to think. So. Two five guide delta. Okay, total RMS. Oops, latest. Oh, well, it is. See how we had a rough patch there. Uh, what are we at? Bu 
but red is RMS and RMS is coming down with time. Oh, it just went out. It's green. Green is RA again. So RA has been dipping out. All right. I am going to do a focus procedure. Let's just try it. We'll see what happens here. Whoa. What is decla that was declination, red is declination here. Peak 1.6. Ooh, or am I running into some clouds or something? No, I think it's okay. It's clear enough we can do guiding here. All right, let's look at our focus. What's our focus doing? So we've got a three point. Oh, let me just hit a 15. How long is the exposure? One second. Okay. Where are we at? Moving by 1,500 steps. I think it started out at 9,300. Oh, here we're starting to get. Three, four. Where was this? 93. Okay, so it's starting to hone in there. Ninety four hundred down to seventy five steps, ninety ninety three to five. So that was two six seven, so ninety three two five. You think it would try ninety four fifty here? I don't know why. Oh, focus procedure complete. What did I come down to? Two. All right. Well, that's. 2.5, I can usually get it lower, but the visibility may be preventing us here, hindering us. All right, where are we at on guiding? Not too bad. Green is RA again. Let's look at our total. So RA is green here also. RMS has come down uh, 1.7 so I am getting some spikes out here and there thing. I think I messed up. So I think, oh, is it? No, that's not it. Oh, I think it's where I center my mouse and then I scroll is what centers that white line, the middle line, the zero. So where are we at? 1.5. RA 
RMS 1.3. So, hey, I guess this is the information that people are interested in. Um, red is a plus or minus two arc seconds. You can see I've gotten out of there a little bit. 